I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to review Volume 7 and Volume 8 back to back. Even though Volume 8 isn't finished yet and we can't talk about Volume 7 without talking about Volume 8 since they're in kind of interconnected. Y you know what? Screw it, I'm reviewing them back to back. Ruby Volume 7 is in my opinion, the worst volume. The story continues right after the last one, where our heroes arrive in Atlas and discover that the neighboring city Mantle is under strict military jurisdiction. Soon they run into Penny. Hooray! She's still alive! Later on, they realize that General Ironwood is planning to use Amity Arena as a communication satellite to warn the world of Salem. Side because there's an election coming up, and Weiss's father is contending. And a freedom fighter named Robin Hill, get it, is also contending for the people of Mantle. On top of that, Atlas is trying to protect the Winter Maiden. Trouble arises when Weiss's father makes a shady deal with Watson Tyrion. They rig the election, causing him to win, but Penny is accused of murder and might be disassembled. Now, Team Ruby has to figure out who they can trust in this kingdom. The biggest problem that this volume has is that it has a lot of buildup, but no payoff. Penny gets accused of murder. That ends. Weiss's father seizes political power. That doesn't last long. Even when Salem taunts Ruby about her mother, this causes her to mentally break down. But in the very next scene, she's totally okay. Nothing has weight. We even have payoff with no buildup. There's an emotional scene near the end with Penny and the dying Winter Maiden. And all I keep thinking is, who is this lady? Why are we focusing on her? People claim that Ironwood has a lot of development. In some cases, I kind of see where they're coming from, but I still disagree. We don't really see him making questionable decisions until the finale. Even when it comes, it's just so over the top and out of place. He kind of turns into an Equestria Girls villain, he's just going crazy. I do like Robin and her band of huntresses, but the one thing you're thinking is, wasn't this supposed to be the White Fang? Their motto is literally, bare your teeth. So why replace the White Fang with a literal diet version of the same thing? The main character's new designs are kind of off. I mean, Ruby, Weiss, and Yang look alright, but Blake looks weird compared to her character model from the last three volumes. If the volume was going to work, they would have to do either two things. Make Weiss's father the bad guy and have him make reckless decisions that harken Salem's arrival, or just have it be Ironwood versus Robin. They try to do both, but it comes out as a mess. Is there anything in Volume 7 I like? Yes. The fights in Mantle were pretty entertaining, though repetitive. I do love the speech about fear at the end. And I do love the scene where Weiss talks with her mother. Nothing much to say, but it's an emotional piece of animation. Overall, Volume 7 has good ideas and intentions, but it just comes out as a mess. Volume 8, on the other hand, is more of my cup of tea. Though it still carries the flaws from the last volume, and it's not yet finished, but from the looks of things, it's shaping up to be one of the best volumes of the show. Atlas and Mantle are under siege when Salem shows up. Our heroes split up, Ruby, Blake, Nora, Weiss, and Penny are going to try to launch the Amity satellite while John, Ren, Yang, and Oscar are trying to escort citizens of Mantle to safety. Things get complicated when Salem's new creation, the Hound, kidnaps Oscar and interrogates him on where the Relegate Beacon is. Like the previous volumes where there were chapters where sort of nothing happens, this volume is always on the go. There's always something happening, there's always a reveal, it always keeps you on the edge of your seat. We get to know the backstory of Cinder and the conditions that made her so despicable. And yes, it makes a lot more sense than Starlight Glimmer's backstory. There's also a scene where Ruby sends out her message to the world, and we get to see a lot of familiar faces. Honestly, the proper way to review this volume is to talk about everything that happens, so let me not spoil it. Though by the time of this review, Volume 8 is going to be going through a hiatus due to the pandemic, so it will not continue until February. 
really make a final conclusion as of yet, but what we got so far is some of the best scenes in all of Ruby. So normally I would conclude Rubyathon here, but we got one more show to review, so sit tight, we're almost done.